is my Hewing T1 Ranger Vito build and today I'm going to give you a walkthrough on the parts and modifications that I have made on this small plane. To begin with, let me show to you the flight controller that I have opted to install on this plane. This one is a Matek H743 Slim and underneath the flight controller you'll find the Mamba Mini 4-in-1 ESC 25 amperes which came from my Mamba F405 mini stack. Just behind the FC stack, you will find the hubby wing 5 volt 3 amperes UBEC that powers the servo rail that I have made for this build. Since the H743 Slim does not have its own dedicated servo rail, like what is commonly seen on other Matic wing boards. On this build, I installed a Dragon Link nano receiver that has a 25 milliwatt output, and the coax is routed into the side of the fuselage, while the PCB of the antenna is glued on the side using Uhu Pore. Now you can see that the lower element of the antenna is just left dangling. It won't be causing too much loss on the range but doesn't need to be optimal for this case. Up in front, you'll find here a Matek 1.3 GHz video transmitter that has a Dragonlink 1.3 GHz dipole. I did not put heatsink on it but instead relied on the intake ports on the nose of the fuselage for cooling. The coax cable of the video transmitter runs along the side of the fuse and goes out through the side that I have cut along the foam for the Dragon Link dipole. For the motor wires, I opted to use MR30 connectors for each side of the wing. Now, these connectors have three wires that connect the ESC and the motors. So it will facilitate easy uh, disconnection or connection of the um, motors to the ESC just in case I want to disassemble this build and also I use the same MR30 connector for the tail rotor just in case I want to remove the boom from the main fuselage on this build I opted for a BN880 GPS module that has an integrated compass which is one of the requirements for a VTOL build Although in Arduplane 4.1 onwards, one can go compassless meaning you don't have to have a physical um, compass module on your build but uh, instead it will estimate the heading based on the IMU and some GPS information although it won't be as accurate as having a true compass module. I chose Emax RS2205 2300KV motors for this build and the propellers are HQ prop. 5x4.3 tri blades and this motor and propellers are uniform all throughout the build. For the cameras, I've used a Cadex Baby Rattle 2 for the nose cam and for the tail, I've used a Cadex Ant Nano. Both are nano sized cameras. Now these two cameras are switched by the flight controller using its dual camera system and the toggling is done via switch on my radio controller. The control surfaces have the Emacs ES9052MD. These are digital Metal Gear servos which are considered submicros, weighing below 9 grams. So this is really ideal for detail since the servo packet is quite small, thus a submicro servo would be ideal to use. For the tilt, I opted for the GDW DS041MG which are colorless digital high torque servos and with a 1.2 mm push rod to control the tilting mechanism. I added a carbon fiber sleeve on the link to address the buckling making it stiffer. You may notice that I have replaced the stock intake vent with a 3D printed one and this is to accommodate my Cadex peanut camera for stabilized footage. But I also plan on putting a panning servo to get a wider perspective in flight. 
that I might move the nose camera into the panning servo if that's the case. The wings are still detachable and can easily be popped off by pressing the tabs. The MR30 connectors as well as the servo connectors can be unplugged to release the wing from the plane. That would allow easier transport or storage. The same goes for the tail. I just need to unplug the MR30 connector as well as the elevator servo connector along with the camera connector from the flight controller to release the boom. I have printed the parts with PETG filament with 40% infill for the tail rotor mount and 25% infill for the tilt rotor mechanism as recommended by Mark Apple in his Thingiverse post. The all-up weight of the build is around 756 grams which include a Cadex peanut and a 4S 1300mAh lithium polymer battery pack. Although I was able to balance it at CG with a 4S 2200mAh LiPo, though I haven't tested it in flight. In theory, I can use a 4S 18650 uh, lithium-ion battery pack if I want to extend the flight time. With the 4S 1300mAh uh, LiPo pack, I was able to get a around 15 minutes of flight time which include a short hover for takeoff and landing and most of the time it's flying in fixed wing mode. I guess this concludes my walkthrough video for the Heaving T1 Ranger Beetle build. If you got further questions you can leave a message below. Thanks again for watching.